The year is 1986, a group of ambitious teams attending McDonald 28 Junior High in the Seventh Ward of New Orleans were neighborhood friends. Some would even be related. This ambitious group of teens would have something in common. Their commonality would be jumping job and rocking belly shoes. It wouldn't be long before they were one with the moniker, the Bally Boys. Unbeknownst to them at the time, the name Bally Boys would stick with them for life. Let's fast forward to 1987. Most of the Bally Boys are now attending John Mack Senior High School along with Buku Killers and Hustlers from Uptown, Levi, Corey, Ulysses, Haram, and Brian Williams, AKA Baby, just to name a few. It's the late 80s and that hard was bumping. Every D-boy out the hood was rocking leather troop jackets, troop tennis, leather Adidas jackets, Adidas tennis, leather Deodora jackets, Deodora tennis, Porter Stevens leather jackets with the colorful sleeves, Valley shoes and tennis, and velour, Christian Dior jogging suits. If you know, you know. This era can't be mentioned without paying homage to the leather sweaters from Rue and the leather pants and fits from BBH. It wouldn't be long before Baby and his brother Ronald Williams, aka Sugar Slim, would launch Cash Money Records. Another hustler from the N.O., Roderick Smith, aka Jen, would tag team with Richard the Ghost Pina to farm Hard Head Records. Corey Branch, aka Rooster Red, would go hard in the paint for Hard Head Records promoting the brand, pushing MCL in the imprint in the streets. Back to everywhere I went, the ninth yeah. wall, eighth wall, sixth, fifth wall, like I went to all of them guys and I let all them hit and they were like, man, this guy is awesome. Yeah. Unbeknownst to many, Mr. Red was also the first to launch the hard head t-shirts. From then on out, it would be on and popping. Not to be overshadowed, Boosie would launch his own label, Bally Boy Records, aka Bally Boy Entertainment. It would all be one conglomerate with rising stars such as Link Vanderhurst, aka MCL, The Black Robin Hood, and Michael Wilson, aka Crazy, along with Crazy's wife, Rachel Jackson, aka Alamo. They would also rock as a group with Legend Man, going by the name Murder, Inc., dropping the classic Let's Die Together. If you know, you know. Crazy and Legend Man were signed with Rough Era Records after the passing of Roger Smith. MCL would go on to sign with Belly Boy Records. Rachel, a.k.a. Alamo, would ultimately end up leaving her rap career behind her. Baby of Cash Money Records would go with his move by trying to capitalize off the passing of Jen. It wouldn't be long before Baby would approach L about signing to CMR. This would be before L inked the deal with Bally Boy Records. Heard on the street was that Baby fronted L a disrespectful $400 to sign with CMR. This lowball offer would offend L, who would take the $400 and keep it pushing. It 
was this jack move that will be the start of the Valley Boy 7 Ward, CMR 3rd Ward feud. So behind me, running like the chance with the mask and the 9G. Come on with the cash, so much cash I can buy me. Everything I dreamed of, everything I feed for. Money and business, have a calorie, didn't Tina. Look at the life I live, look at my wife and kids. It ain't enough money, gotta struggle and fight to live. I make the decision, fuck that, I'ma fight and live. I'll pick up the nine, nigga, something that's gotta give. And look at me now. This will not only spark a war on wax, but a war in the streets as well. Several disses will fly back and forth from the camps. With L dropping the banger, no love, taking shots at the entire uptown, bragging about going under with the $400 from Baby. No love. From the Mac to the Mills to the Cali, yo To the motherfuckin' Cash, you lay your ass on yo No, I'm coming to the cup with the damn the coat A hundred pounds on the track, you take the nasty clothes From the Mac to the Mills to the Cali, yo To the motherfuckin' Cash, you lay your ass on yo I'll be coming to the cup with the damn the coat A hundred pounds on the track, you take the No love, fuck town in my city, niggas hackin' kinda shitty Grab my nine, cause it's time to show these niggas no pity Talkin' bout you split a hard head it ain't been done yet, real niggas from the third, I ain't seen one yet Y'all niggas take y'all killers, I think that y'all ain't quick to blast like seven walls, take for no take Lil Doogie you a bitch, and chop a city we said it rappin' third wall Knowing you from the east, I wouldn't fight ya, I smack you like a bitch And put the rest of cash money records in the ditch They fucked your ass up, got you talking shit about town talk it out the way you from ya You kicked out, you all heard a baby with 32 gold From the Mac to the Melt to the Candy, yo To the motherfucking Cash, show where your ass gon' go I'll be coming through the cup with the Cash, the coat Around the crowds, when the circus take me nasty clothes From the Mac to the Melt to the Candy, yo To the motherfucking Cash, show where your ass gon' go I'll be coming through the cup with the Cash, the coat Around the crowds, when the circus take me no love James Tapp AKA Soldier Slim would bust back on the Kane and Abel track, Watch Me. Christopher Dorsey, AKA BG, was sent a shot on the classic It's All On You Volume 1 album. Shit had gotten to the point where the two clicks could not perform at the same venue. This, however, would not last long, as Battle Boy ENT and CMRO would both be booked to perform at Club Caesars on the West Bank. Downtown in the Seven War was in that bitch. Deep. When BG took the stage to perform, the dudes out the seven was bucking, me mugging that boy, pointing in his face, making it damn near impossible for Doogie to perform. The tension and animosity was crazy in the building. Dudes from both sides were clutching outside of the club, waiting for it to go down. It would take several armed security and the NOPD to prevent a big brawl from breaking out that night. This, however, would not be the end. In another app, Batty Boys and the Seven War would be in the building at the House of Blues. Also inside the House of Blues was Baby and CMR with Buku Killers out the 3 and the 13th. Both clicks would be shot and jewelry down. Before you knew it, the night would be coming to an end. The club was clearing out. When Lucy looked up, he would be surrounded by Baby and his goons. Telling the goons to stand down, Baby would approach Boosie about the $400 and L originally being his artist. The club would be full of oohs and ahs as Baby and Boosie would be in a heated conversation. Boosie and Baby would exchange numbers. Boosie would ultimately leave the club without a scratch on him. Needless to say, L would never contact Baby regarding the alleged agreement over the $400. From the night of the Club Caesars incident going forward, CMR would never perform at club venues in the city again.